Hello, my name is Vincent, and welcome. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the models for Adeptus Titanicus that I've been collecting over the last year or so, here at Bunker 6. There have been four editions to Adeptus Titanicus, and this is the latest released by Games Workshop in 2018. This is the rule book for Adeptus Titanicus, the Horus Heresy. And I was watching an interview from the legendary Andy Chambers, and he mentioned that Adeptus Titanicus was supposed to be a fully self-contained game, so you wouldn't have to worry about rulers or dice or templates, it was already all in the box. And Games Workshop seemed to have kept the same philosophy going in its 2018 version too, which is fantastic. In my humble opinion, these are the best sculpts that Games Workshop have put out in recent years. Everything from Adeptus Titanicus from Forgeworld and Games Workshop is absolutely spot on. They've completely nailed it in my opinion. The only thing that slightly saddens me is they haven't got around to making an Imperator Titan yet in this style. That would be absolutely amazing, but until then, I do want to say that this is all really good quality stuff. The book is fantastic, the hardback version that I have here. As you can see from the pages, everything has got this nice semi-gloss finish to it. You've even got a little blue silk bookmark, and then you have that slightly gloss finish on the hardback front and back, which is really nice. Now, the cynical-minded might say that the you know bare minimum is to make a quality product if you're a billion-dollar valued company, but there is something about the fit and finish of everything here that just seems that the attention to detail was done out of love rather than out of profit margins. And as I said, this is screaming through in the graphic design of these cards, for example, to the actual sculpts themselves. Now, Warhammer 40k and Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigmar have huge releases, and they have a huge dedicated force behind them. But it really feels like the entire Games Workshop facility were actually all hands on deck with this release too. It didn't feel like a sidelined project or an afterthought. Anyway, moving on, here are just some of the packages that come in the actual box set. I've never opened these before, and I'm just looking at them for the first time myself, as I have never played any of the games from Epic 40k or Adeptus Titanicus, I just paint the models. But I thought I'd go through all the stuff that you would get if you were to pick up a box set anyway. Now this brew is quite interesting, I really like it, I like all the little parts to it. I think they're quite fun, and you get these wonderful little markers and objective markers that actually would fit perfectly in an Epic 40k scenario too. Everything feels heavy and looks like it's cast in iron with these amazing metalwork style steampunk features of some of these markers. It really screams authenticity in the setting that is trying to sell the player, I think. And here are a couple of handy dandy quick reference sheets, always very nice to have in a box set of any particular board game or tabletop game. Just being able to quickly navigate around the rulebook for some generalized points is always a nice touch. Now, Games Workshop shill alarms are about to start ringing. But I genuinely mean this when I say this. The range of Adeptus Titanicus models that have come out in 2018 and onwards are the best sculpts and my favorite sculpts that Games Workshop have ever released. Probably because I'm a big stompy robot kind of fan in the first place, but I think they absolutely nailed every sculpt. I'm sorry, <laughs> they're absolutely brilliant. And the Forge World sculpts are also equally brilliant too. So this is the Warhound Scout Titan, and as the name suggests, it is a Scout Titan, therefore it scurries around the battlefield looking out for trouble before any big titans show up, like this, the Warmaster Heavy Battle Titan. This is one of two Warmaster Titans, the other one is a more recent release, which is the Iconoclast Heavy Battle Titan. Quite intimidated about painting this model, the largest model I've ever managed to paint before this was a Tau Storm Surge, which is a pretty big model, but there's something about all the colors and variations and all the different tints of metal and rust and weathering that I want to try on these titans that I've never done before, say on the storm surge, so a little bit worried because I don't want to mess it up because it's obviously, you know, a very nice model. But we will try in the future, nonetheless, and dedicate an episode to painting each and every one of these titans to the highest standard that I can figure out anyway. And in the box, when you buy a sort of an official release rather than, say, a sprue from eBay, you do get all these battle cards that give you all the statistics and everything else that you need to play a good game of Adeptus Titanicus with your new model. Now this is a Warlord Battle Titan. I got this one particularly because I really love the claw. I love all the little details of all the pistons and everything like that that are actually on the fists themselves. So that's why I got this particular variation. 
and you'll see that you have different types of body panels. That's for the Traitor Legions and the Loyalist Legions. Now here we have the Warbringer Titan. I really like the detail on all the paneling on this particular model. I think it's very intricate and I also like the style of all the helmets and heads that this particular model comes with. It's a really beautiful model. And in terms of scale, this model sort of sits in the middle out of all of the sizes of the Titans. And what's quite nice is the fact that you get to choose your Legion, whether it be Loyalist or Traitor Legion, from the body panelling that's actually included in the sprues. Now, although these aren't Titans, they still support the Titans. They are bipedal machines and they are Knights. And these Knights are probably the smallest out of all of the range when it comes to Adeptus Titanicus. Ah, but it doesn't matter, they're still really cute models. And despite the scale difference, they've still managed to maintain so much of the detail in these smaller scale Titans, Scouts, and Knights. Now, this is an already built Questorus Knight. I have three of these, but I don't mind the fact that it's built because I'm going to be chopping it up anyway because I am going to be magnetizing it for an upgrade kit. Obviously, this was substantially cheaper than buying it brand new from Games Workshop. And if I can find deals like that, I will go ahead and buy them. This is the upgrade kit that I was speaking about for the three knights, and you'll see that it comes with Thunderstrike gauntlets, rocket pods, and additional helmets. Now, I wanted to pick up pretty much everything that Forge World did, but the problem is I started getting into the Forge World and Depths Titanica stuff a little bit too late, so I missed out on some really good stuff. But I did manage to pick up some Mechanicum Questorus Knights Styrix. Sadly, you only get a pair rather than three or four in a pack, but never mind. I have them, that's the most important thing. Now coming up is the Reaver Battle Titan. This actually came in the original box set. I also bought the upgrade kit for this too. I do want to have as many variants for each of the Titans as possible in terms of weapon loadout. And it's a great model. And considering its size, it's actually a very well-priced model, I think. Now this is a purchase I slightly regret, but it's because I bought these before Adeptus Titanicus 2018 was announced. And these are actually called True Scale. I still don't know what that means but they are True Scout Warhound Scout Titans. Now these are substantially smaller than the 2018 release, but they are actually made of metal. And please be aware that these are not official models, these are classed as forum wear. But whoever did these sculpts did a fantastic job. The detail on these is absolutely amazing. And if you were to do an apples to apples comparison between these and the official release, they look pretty much the same in terms of quality detail. Now, what was quite surprising is I've actually bought most of my Forge World stuff from eBay, not um, Forge World directly, and it comes in official boxes and everything like that. When I picked these up, I assumed that they were the same too, but these I think are actually recasts. But they're very good recasts nonetheless, so that's why I didn't refund them. Now, this is an item that I've wanted for a very long time, and someone very kindly sold it to me from a Facebook group. If you're very familiar with uh, the Epic 40k magazine that was released, you'll know that on the cover of issue one, there was a Warmonger Titan, and these are the parts that make up a Warmonger Titan. It is an Imperator Titan with these upgrade features. It's a really cool model, but you actually have to remove quite a lot of the parts from an Imperator Titan to make this Warmonger version. That's why I'm using a second-hand Imperator Titan, because we don't need a brand new one. They're far too expensive and is completely pointless. I would say that these upgrades actually replace about a third of the model, including the spires and the radar array. And here it is, 1994, the year my love for Games Workshop began. I have two of these little sprues of knights. I'm actually going to keep them in their sprues as a sort of a little reminder of when I first fell in love with Games Workshop. But here are some secondhand ones that I picked up. I've got quite a few of these, and I'm going to make sure they match the house of all of the other titans and warhounds and knights in my collection. And because I'm going to be doing the Legio Astorum, which is a blue and yellow colorway, these Titans actually in their original advertising material also came in a blue and yellow colorway, so it's going to be a perfect match. And here are the backs of these models. These are from the Titan Legions series from 1994, as previously mentioned, and they were part of a box set called Titan Legions, and they were fighting up against the Orcs, and it comes with some incredible box artwork and is a very fun game. And this is a Knight's Errant HQ unit, as you can see it's made of metal rather than the other models which are made of plastic. And if you are buying any of these vintage models for the first time, please be aware that they do contain most likely lead. They're referred to as white metal, but a lot of these older models do contain lead, so make sure you wear a mask if you're doing any filing or work with this model while wet if you're going to be filing, just so you don't breathe in any of these particles. 
And this is a 1994 Imperial Castellan Knight. I've actually got two of these. And finally, a nice, very vintage Imperial Warhound Titan. I will most likely buy one more just so I have a pair of these, hopefully with different weapons. And I'll have a little set and we'll make it have the same house markings as everything else. Well, that was the Titans. I hope you enjoyed the episode. As per always, thank you for sticking around and enjoying the shows. I am really enjoying making them and seeing the little community we have here growing. If you have any thoughts or comments, please leave them below. And if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. But until next time, I've been Vincent, signing off from here at Bunker 6. Yeah.